there are many built-in shortcuts designed to make particular common arrays easy to construct. For example, we have the commands zeros and ones, which do what their names suggest. It's often useful to have an array of random values. There are two common choices for making those. The rand function makes an array whose entries are all random numbers chosen uniformly between 0 and 1. You can scale and shift the values if you want to span a different interval. The other random number workhorse is RANDN. Here, the entries are all chosen from the standard normal distribution, or Gaussian distribution. Again, you scale and shift the result to change the variance and mean of the values. You can also use arrays as blocks in the construction of larger arrays. Essentially, you put them inside of square brackets as if they were numbers. As long as the sizes align sensibly, you get the combined blocks. If the sizes don't make sense, you'll get an error. So far, I've been careful to use the term array and not matrix. A matrix is an array or vector with a particular mathematical interpretation and algebraic structure. While I find it useful to draw a mental distinction between arrays and matrices, MATLAB makes no formal distinction between them. Certain constructions arise often when dealing with matrices. One of these is the identity matrix, which MATLAB lets you create using the punnily named command EYE. The identity matrix is a special case of a diagonal matrix, which is non-zero only along the line from the top left to the bottom right within the matrix. You can create a diagonal matrix using the diag command. You can also use diag to extract the numbers on the diagonal of any matrix. Finally, diagonal matrices are themselves special cases of triangular matrices. It's easier to see these by example rather than by definition. You get the upper triangular part of a matrix with the triU command, and the lower triangular part with the triL command. That pretty well covers the basics of constructing arrays and matrices. In the next two videos, I'll explain how to do operations on them, first on arrays, and then on matrices.